gonna switch. Changed. We're gonna switch to the other big story of the day, ish, um, which is the Pacers want to trade everybody, and oh, what should the Celtics do, and can they get him for this guy, and what if we Don, give him? What why if is we Turner give in them, that graphic? Huh? Why, why is not? Turner in that graphic? Hey, you know Brad Mosham. I'm them. just no. saying that ship has sailed. They better not I'm trade ju- for Miles Turner. <laughs> no, no, no. But I'm just saying. So now, what if what are Celtics fans doing? If we give them Neesmith and Pritchard and Richardson and like all your garbage and throw in a pick like, or don't two, you dare touch Jalen, right? <laughs> yeah. But we're back to this conversation again. Would you trade for Sabonis? Absolutely. If you're the Pacers, does the conversation end when you when you when when you say? You can have anyone but Jalen. Yes, it probably does. So again, you're right back to square one. The Celtics are not trading a bunch of spare parts for an all-star center forward. Not going to happen. So that's the end of the conversation. Good night. Like that's it. That's it. That's where it goes. Unless. If you if you don't want to trade trade Jalen Brown, there is no trade. That's it. Nobody wants to trade Jalen for Sabonis, right? I mean, that's where the conversation obviously starts. And then there's no trade. Exactly. The question is, who does? That's the question I got for Sherrod. I I look around. Sherrod, is the ice cream truck coming by? (laughs) I wish. I I was like, is that me? (laughs) Sherrod is in the showtime cycle, too, here. The allure. Um, No, no, Sherrod. I would would not do that. I would not do that. It, 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 It just doesn't make sense in terms of your roster. It doesn't make sense in terms of um, bang for your buck. I mean, Miles Turner, he's, he's had a great, he's a great couple of years defensively, uh, but Jalen is just so much more a complete player. Uh, and and I, I do think that ultimately, if, if let's say you're, you're Indiana. Yeah, Turner is out of the question. I am in yeah. on Sabonis, who I think could connect the Jays a bit here. A phenomenal scorer, playmaker. I think untapped potential in his game from being they're part the of that double age. big they're combination both, there. They're both 25 years old. I think this guy, you haven't even scratched the surface of what he's capable of in the right system, in the right uh, array of offensive talent around him. Again, he's the number one option here in Indiana. He playmakes. He and produces his own offense. Nails. Yeah, and it, it, if you remember a couple of early games, it was like a back-to-back the Celtics had with them, and he was just running the offense down the stretch in crunch time, creating plays uh, where the Pacers beat the Celtics. There. That's where Jimmy fell in love with the Pacers. I actually need him in my corner here to hype up Sabonis, but I think this is the perfect chance to consolidate, and I think there's a bigger opportunity, tell me if I'm wrong, Sherrod, to make a deal without Jalen here just because of, I think the overall value of Rob and what you've built up in him here, the array of picks you have at your disposal, plus the contract. You don't. You, you, you don't have an array of picks. You have you have a bunch yeah, of picks. picks you, talking about? you have a bunch every of picks single one of the Celtics future picks. That doesn't matter. Everyone's got that. That's the whole thing. You have to yeah. look at what the Celtics have that other people don't. They have a bunch of crappy picks, like middle of middle of the first round picks. And Bobby's trying to give away his spare tire. And then a bunch of nothings. And the, 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 it's the nothings that make this deal impossible. If Aaron B. Smith was somebody else, you might be able to trade him because you might look at that and say, this guy could be potential, you know, who knows what, starter, starter. at the very least. A starter, yeah. at least. But you don't have any of that. You have a bunch of guys that you can get anywhere. So they, the Celtics have nothing to sweeten that deal with. Nothing? So you know. you're, hy- you're hyping up Rob all show long. Rob is the only you thing you have to sweeten that deal with. That's But Rob is now a, a guy making $54 million over four years. And what are you going to do? Have Turner have Miles Turner and Rob together and trade Sabonis? That doesn't it help. It doesn't you. matter. You're just comp- compiling assets if you're Indiana. Here's my that thing. That doesn't help you. That who, doesn't help who, you. Who else in the league is enticing them in this deal? Because to your point, maybe Sabonis doesn't blow you away if you're Boston, but that's sort of a good thing. No, he I don't does think blow me away. Does, I don't think I don't. I don't, I'm not quite sure if this is the OKC situation. I mean, I'm sure it's a rebuild to, to an extent, but like at the end of the day, they're going to look for someone that's a that's a, an all, if not already an all star, on the verge of it. I just think the criteria when you look at the Celtics as players, it's going to be Jalen Brown. If it's not Jalen Brown, then I think it would be silly for the to, for the Pacers to even consider a, a center a, a, a trade that's centered around Robert Williams or those pieces that that, that John just mentioned. I mean, sure, one, sure it's a good point by John talking about his new contract, but two. I mean, Rob hasn't even proven that he can give you a full season of health, like, like healthier, you know? Like, I, I just Fair don't. Point. 
I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't see that. Yeah, that obviously came up in the Orlando happened. negotiation. So, Rod, who do you think is the favorite to land Sabonis if you had to name one team? Oh, gosh. At this point, I just think it's too early because I don't think we've seen enough games. I don't think teams have a, bet, a good enough feel for who they have. I mean, when you look out there and you look at what Sabonis does, it would have to be a team that's looking to position themselves to take maybe one more step towards uh, a deep playoff run. For example, the Knicks would be a team that would have interest in him. Uh, when you look at what he does, you look at his impact. You what are they offering? See, well, see, that's just the thing. I mean, it's not this even is where so much like, that. It's, what do they have that you would want? That's the question yeah. that you need to ask. And that's the issue with a lot of teams. That's the issue with the Celtics. If I think there's right. one team out there that can surpass the Celtics offer, and it's Philadelphia. Wait, and Bobby, you- uh, Bobby, first of all, there is no Celtics offer. That's the whole thing is the Celtics have the same thing everyone else has, which is their own draft picks, and then nothing else. That's not good, and that's, and that's not it. That's the whole point is there is no Celtics offer. There actually is nothing other than their draft picks. That's their, Rob, pro- that's their problem. This, I mean, it's one player, but – it matters. No. That's the center. I think John got it right. Deal. Do you want to trade Jalen or not? I think that's that. That's sort of the conversation. I don't ends. think. I don't think Rob. I, I think Rob is fine. I think Rob is the guy who sweetens a deal that allows you but to what trade. Do you, what do you need to get this done? I, Simmons certainly. I mean, Indiana wants. Simmons you're talking to begin about with. an all star, and you're going to trade a borderline reserve and a couple middle first round picks. It's not great value for the Pacers. Like. I like Rob a lot, but I mean, if you're the Pacers, you're like, I'm getting a guy who plays 25 minutes a night, scores eight points a game, you know, grabs a couple of boards. That's nice. Has some big dunks, but he's not anything established yet. And I got to pay him for three more years. And then I get nothing. Like, I don't know that that's enough. Like if you, you want a young up and coming potential all-star something, maybe they view Rob in that light. I don't know. But again, I, that's the key. I, I don't know. I really, I think the Celtics have what everyone else has, which is just draft picks. And not I agree a lot with of, Joe yeah, Sway that you do run into that. You're going to give us Jalen or hang the phone up thing. And I think they run into that a lot with the trade discussions, certainly, because why wouldn't you ask for Jalen if you're one of these teams? I just you think this is the you situation. absolutely have to. Yeah. I mean, you would not be doing your job if you did. I just think this is a situation where, in a very unique circumstance, I don't think there's a great fit for this guy around the league that's not Boston. And the Philadelphia is the only one I can think of. And we know where Philadelphia is at with their outrageous imagination of what they think Simmons is going to garner for them eventually. This would be a great asset management play for them. You know, get a guy in some bonus who can help you now, who you can flip down the line possibly. I don't know if they're going to do it, but if they don't, like Sherrod mentions the Knicks, I mean, I think they're sort of looking at Lillard waiting on that thing. A lot of teams are. The Celtics, was actually here. you know, the, they're in a position to consolidate things where I just think this is kind of a no brainer. You have all this different stuff. And again, you might be right, John, maybe it's not enough, but do you take that? Extra it's not step enough because, because this is your chance to like, is Beal knocking on that door? Is Levine knocking on that door down the line? This might be the star that's available to you right now that you actually make that aggressive push for. And, you know, maybe the stuff that if, you have right now outside if, of Draylon isn't enough, but it, I'd give it a shot. If you can get a, an all-star caliber player for anything not named Jalen Brown, you absolutely try to push your chips in because you will not have another opportunity if you think that that's important to you. So, yes, if it were a couple of picks and rob and take your pick of the kids and they would do it, you have to look at it and say, yeah, and that would kill me to get was it Rob, and you're 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 find a lot of acquire a player of this caliber and again when everyone's scrutinizing Sabonis he can't do this he can't do that nobody's perfect there's maybe 10 perfect players and 10 players in the league that are above reproach maybe everyone else has some warts even your own stars Jason Tatum's got them too so I I don't want to hear necessarily about what Sabonis is not it is a just top... way has been compromised <laughs> yeah it's a top tier player. Did he? Did the security come and take him away? I, th- I think so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. That's where we're at. Um, so uh, Sharad, forget about what it works. How much do you like the player? You talking about Sabonis? Yeah. Yeah. Love him. I mean, he. I mean, he's an ideal big. I mean, a guy that can space the floor with his jump shot. He can. You can put him at the elbow, and he can run your offense half court sets. He's a good rebounder. He's physical. He's not afraid to get his. You know, put his nose in there and, and do some things. And and you know, the, the X factor that doesn't 
get talked a lot about is his lineage. I mean, his dad, man, passers in the, the game. So he has, yeah. So he has the oh, DNA. Man. He's got the DNA to be a, a, a yeah. elite player. There's not, there's not a lot about his game that surprises anyone because when you look at how his dad played, it's really his dad only in a lot of ways better. A modern version of it, pretty much. I just think yeah. I just think it's a great fit too because you know his weakness is defense. He doesn't have great footwork on that end. There's some canter to him in the pick and roll. So you're gonna have to put him in a system that can protect them and play well around him, which we've seen with Ennis Freedom that you can do here, that the, you can survive with that guy in the lineup when you have good defenders around him. I love the idea of him playing off Horford, those two being able to go back and forth with their passing game. And really, you talk about the Jays connecting. If you have a guy who's running offense out of that big man spot and both the Jays moving off him, that might solve that problem a little bit here. This isn't Ben Simmons in terms of a passer, but you have a guy that can get four or five assists a game here. I'd love to see him become a little bit of a better shooter to maybe solve some of the spacing issues that you have. You're probably still running a double big lineup at that point. But can this become a bigger deal? You know, you got guys like Torrey Craig in Indiana. You got guy like Jer- Jeremy Lamb who's shooting 40% from three. I feel like we're almost back at that Gordon Hayward. I made a joke earlier about that because there's so much on Indiana's roster that would help Boston that you look back on that trade situation there and said would have helped Boston in the aftermath of that. I just think there's so much potential here for these teams to get something done. It's just about how many picks you're willing to put on the table. And I don't even know if John wants to have that conversation because it gets heated. But, <laughs> like, I, I just – we're sitting here talking about these picks still that haven't been moved. And I know it's not, like, win at all costs right now. But if you have an opportunity to consolidate, I don't know to what degree you get aggressive with those. But it, it's tough because, again, I said We're earlier body. in the year – You start protecting those a little bit now if you're Boston. So I am torn on it. You are not going to move a player who is an all-star for a bunch of pieces and parts. You're just not going to do that, particularly a young player like Sabonis. There has to be something of significant value that they're getting in return. And when you start looking at this, I mean, you take out Tatum. Future all-star, higher picks. Yeah, the the best option that you would have is Rob Williams and you can't really count on that because you don't know if he's going to be able to play from one game to the next so it becomes extremely difficult to see a scenario yeah. where they would have something that you would want because they have that, lots of stuff that you want but what do yeah. you yeah. have that they would want? And plus, that's, that's it. always guys, it. let's face it let's face yeah. it too I mean Bobby the, the secret's out like the, the Romeos and the, like <laughs> the rest of the league knows that their pieces are struggling. Like, you know, it's been a couple of seasons now. Yeah. So I, I think the better question That's is... The veil has been lifted, that. and it's not pretty. The, exactly. Yeah. Like, this is, a, this is an important question, right? I want to ask you all. Like, does anyone... I mean, do you guys all have an expiration date for these guys? Look, I'm not trying to get all gloomy or whatever, but realistically, between Tatum and Brown... Yes, you are. You are is there totally an expiration gloomy. date, or do you guys just want to see this thing through until they don't want to play yeah. each other? I mean, or this, championship, whichever comes these, first. This isn't the guy you give up Brown for. These guys no are... The, about exactly. The expiration well, date, I mean, this is... It depends. This is the stuff oh, in the back. Is it the stuff in the back of your fridge when you pull it out and you're like, "Oh my god, this expired four months ago." Like that's how I feel about the prospects. You know, like I didn't know until recently. <laughs> and everyone knows about your fridge. I didn't know until recently that spices expire, and like I was going through my spice rack, and I was like, "2014." Oh, that's a good point. I was like, "Holy crap!" I was like, "You get this out of here." That's how I feel about our guys right now. I mean, it okay? is. It is. It is food. <laughs> Bad spices in the garlic back. Powder. Come on, John. Whatever it was. I, I was like, garlic, those... garlic powder lasts forever, right? Nope. <laughs> that, that shit's stuck to the bottom. It can't John's like, John's like, sweetie, I think this paprika is expired. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it could do it. Nope. It's a bonus. 25 signed through 2024. So there is no rush for Indiana to no. make that move. You need certainly. something real, well, and you're yeah, going to wait yeah, it I out. Love, that, the, I love how set... none of you guys answered the question. <laughs> So I'll I'll tell you this. I, I think that I did answer it. They expired a long time ago in my eyes. Not in the sense Whoa. that they can't, they can't be they can't be passable, usable pros. The idea of them being <sighs> stars or starter level guys. We did I, the summer league thing. We got so close. Wait. So you're saying that because so so the way I, the way I'm understanding it right for for John is this deal not even he, he's not worth. Jalen's value because you you want to see these guys split, but you don't think you don't think this is enough. You don't think that's enough. Uh, a no, value in return John's talking about the young guys. I'm talking way. about our young guys. When you talk about what's their oh, expiration no, no, no. date, they have expired. Joe Sway's oh, okay. talking, no, no, no. talking about Jalen and Tatum. 
Oh, no. I, I still think you're going to hang on to that for a bit. I thought you were talking about our young guys. The no, young no, guys, no. The young guys, to me, they'll, you're never going to get anything for them. But what's your expiration you said, the date? Word you don't have an expiration date for these guys? For Jalen no. and Jason? You're so far away. No. Not I don't yet. think it is, Bobby. The NBA, two, three seasons is, is, is a whole lifetime for some time. I mean, for, that's, for, that's for, a for long candidate. way It's away, always – it's mind. the year before um, the contract. One of them year. is up. It's the year before the contract. See, that, year. That's, sometimes that's, that, that's when it's too late, Joe. You know, it's that's the year. That's when the clock is running. That year where you're like, you're good, right? You know. Um, I give them two seasons. This is the tricky. This one. This is the All right, mark my words. Yeah. Two seasons. I'm giving them. Yeah. This is and then the tricky spot. That. They're still in, and we've kicked this back and forth. Like, which direction do you go here at this point? Like, I, I've, I have argued in favor of keeping the pick, sort of riding that thing out because of the value of them. And John's made this point that they're lottery tickets. You know, you never know when a star is going to come at 14 that you can develop and work up. And all of a sudden, it's not Neesmith, it's Kawhi Leonard at that place. Maybe Brad's a great drafter and just kills Danny's recent draft That's the in terms point. of what he does to come. You're much more likely to hit to, to 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 cash in a lottery ticket there and have one of those guys turn into a starter caliber player than you are to pull off some sort of magic, you know, miracle deal. You know, it's much more likely to hit with one of those. It is. Did you drop the Rosier? No, meaning like, look at the last year, just people drafted in and around, you know, like, as I said, is if you had right now, you know, how many different people did you miss by one that if you'd gotten them instead, you wouldn't be worried right now. You know, you're talking about hero. You're talking about Anthony. You're talking about, um, you know, uh, Ma- Maxi, Desmond Bain, all of these guys. Sadiq you're ta- yeah, Sadiq's cooled down a bit this year, but I know that's your guy. But what I'm saying is, still mad. I'm still tired. Every team, every team can look around and be like, "I wish we had that guy." That happens every year. But the ch- there's still a chance you're going to hit one of those. There's always there's going to be a star in the teens. There's going to be a star in the twenties. Celtics just haven't found him, and they. So you need you got to keep taking swings at that. You might have a chance at another one here, potentially, and Schroeder, you hope. I mean, I still look at moving Schroeder closer to the deadline if there's an offer that blows you away. I think you just got to choose one direction here. You can't sit in the middle like last year. You got to start contender, to set yourself up for something down the line. If a contender offers you a first for either Schroeder or Al because they think they're a Schroeder or Al away from from winning a title and they're happy to give it, I don't care where you are, you do it in a heartbeat. I don't think you would do that for – I don't think Al would get that, but I'm saying – Anybody comes calling for any of your, anybody comes calling for any of your veteran players because that's what they think they need to put them over the hump. And right? It's always the seller's market at the trade deadline. You do it if you're the Celtics. You don't even blink, and it'll make you yeah, worse this year. Deadline. Yeah, but you do it, and it opens up some minutes for young guys, which will make people happy at some point. The thing is, they're just not gonna fall to that level. We're flowing at that 500 point again. They lose tomorrow. They're back to 500. They'll probably win a game after that out of the next two and stick at 500 at that point. So there's no onus in terms of the production or record. I mean, this has been the story of the post game show for two years now is just that up and down, up and down. And there's really no needle that points you in a buyer's direction, which they ended up doing last year, but not aggressively enough for it to really matter in Fournier and or a seller's direction, which arguably they should have done last year, maybe with certain guys. So, like, I don't know, but I do think, like, you just have to start to establish some sort of direction for yourself long term here because the pieces are in place for this team right now. You know, maybe Rob inches closer to all star status, becomes more consistent, healthy, that was those my sort hope. of things. But that's always my I don't, hope. I don't know if that like bumps you up the East hierarchy, especially when you have a Chicago, Lily potentially going to New York. Like, there are going to be things that happen in the East over the next year or two that bump you even further down the ladder if you're Boston potentially here. So I'd love to see something this year that at least starts to, like, point them in some sort of well, direction. Well, what ends up happening is your, your, your two under 25 stars all of a sudden become over 25, and they're roughly the same player. And there are a lot of other people came into the league who are also really, really good. And now, t- from a talent perspective, um, you aren't – you aren't sitting on this pile of like, oh, we've got our young stars. We're totally fine. No, you've got two guys entering their prime with no supporting cast and you have nothing around them. So you got to really be worried about draining the assets. You got to get 
premium talent or you got to hold on to assets, right? You can't just And that's why I take a long look at Sabonis. Like this is I does it make you a contender a finals team today? No, but man, It's not, but you know, how many shots you, things? Yes and no, but how many shots are you getting? Again, people always are looking at the imperfections of the player. How many shots are you getting at an all-star caliber player at this age? Through oh, free agency a- or through other trade opportunities? Not many. If you have a legit shot at acquiring Sabonis for less than Jalen Brown, you have to think you have to consider any and all offers. And listen, I'm not going to say it because I'm, I'm just not. I'm not going to do it, but I'd be putting some picks on the table. And I would. Let's just say that. Yeah. But do they want the damn picks, Bobby? That, <laughs> Depends it, it, how it, many. No, I don't think it does. Do not like picks in the teams, right? unless like, unless we're talking OKC. I mean, that's like the only team is just doesn't. Isn't curious. that how every trade works though? Like Harden, twenties picks from the Nets. But Holiday, you do them. It's not twenties picks. It's not the way you do it. Is you do them well into the future. So the Nets right. picks. The the, right. the Nets. The, the the picks you gave up there were 20, 24, 20, 26. The first like picks. What, what the with, first with, pick with swap is. Uh, the, yeah. The, the first pick swap is twenty four on that on that Harden deal. The first. So you think about doing that if you're Boston, John. Yeah, it's the same thing with the Drew Holiday deal. Those are future deals because you're not grabbing late first rounders you're doing what the celtics did the first time around with kg and pierce which is into the future when you're going to be bad and obviously the timing with the celtics worked out there great um but you're not drafting you don't want milwaukee's pick next year or the you know again i don't think you're in like win or die mode right now but there is a little bit of urgency here you know like what's your move gonna be. be I mean, with that said, what, how do you guys feel about someone like uh, like Karis LeVert if he was the, the centerpiece? Like, what, what would it take uh, for, for the to trade for someone like that? Is that a gamble? Would you like that's that? That's a buy-low guy for sure. It definitely is a buy-low you know, guy. And it's your I feel like that's the kind of weapon this team could use, whether you know Dennis Schroeder is part of the future or not. You know, Just another guy who yeah, put the ball knows? on the floor. You know, uh, he's, he's, he's tough to defend. I mean, he doesn't have a whole lot of size, but... You put him alongside. I mean, that's Tatum definitely Brown, a guy you give up one he pick. Could get, for. He could get his own. You know, he can he can create. So just need guys like that. That's definitely Bobby a guy you wants to acquire. Bobby wants to acquire picks just so he can trade them. I mean, that's what Danny wanted to do <laughs> way back when, but he never traded them. <laughs> traded them. He never did. Um, uh, that's a anyway. good point, Joe Sway. I'm I'm so torn on him because he looked phenomenal in Brooklyn. He obviously had that medical condition a year ago that really threw him off, and he he's been so awful ever that. since. Oh man, he was amazing before that. I, I'd he obviously buy low on him. Um, I just I just don't know if they're selling him low. I think they're trying yeah. to sell him high here if they're going to do it at all. So probably not. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, but again, you do know, need that Sabonis, third wing. You know they're going to sell, you know, Sabonis high, but. Man, yeah, I, don't know. I do, I, I, I do love the idea of that. Depending on what the market says, maybe the Celtics can, can can put something together there that, of course, doesn't involve uh, you know Jalen or Jason. Yeah.